What's up, folks? It's your boy, Coach Ty, back with another one. And today, uh, we have a very hotly debated topic. Heavy versus light weights. Does heavyweight build more muscle or do lightweights build more muscle? Let's dive into the research and find out together. Actually, before we jump into the research, we should define things just for the sake of this discussion. We're gonna term lightweight as anything that you're able to do more than 12 reps with. So 12 plus reps, lightweight. Six and fewer reps, we're gonna term heavyweights. And in that range, we're gonna consider moderate. Again, just for the sake of this discussion. Okay, now, Let's dive into the research. So up until very recently, we thought that there were three primary factors that influenced muscle growth. Mechanical tension, uh, muscle damage, and metabolic stress. Now, again, as I said, until recently, we thought this. The more and more we learn, the more we're learning that mechanical tension is the driver of muscle growth. And mechanical tension alone is the driver of muscle growth. Uh, you might say, well, what about a technique like blood flow restriction? That's all metabolic stress and therefore that causes muscle growth. So getting the pump induces muscle growth too, right? Metabolic stress induces muscle growth as well, right? Not exactly. What we're learning is that the metabolic stress, all it does is lead to more mechanical tension. So ultimately we just circle right back around to mechanical tension. So mechanical tension is the primary driver of muscle growth and everything else kind of speaks to that. I found this clip from uh, Minno Henselmans, who's my favorite person ever, and I, he explained this flawlessly, so I'm gonna go ahead and play that clip right here. If we put all of this together, then basically the current model is that we have these three factors, which a lot of people use, and these all lead to muscle growth. I think the data are a lot more consistent with a model that just has mechanical tension as the driving force of muscle growth, and mechanical tension as a byproduct of muscle damage. And we know that metabolic stress increases mechanical tension, which can indirectly, but under very specific conditional scenarios, increase muscle growth. But there are no direct lines for muscle damage or metabolic stress to muscle growth. It has been said that mechanical tension and metabolic stress kind of have this push-pull relationship with one another, that when one is high and present, things lead towards that direction and vice versa. However, again, we know now that the metabolic stress is simply leading to more mechanical tension. So once again, it kinda, kinda doesn't matter. And the research supports this idea. In one study, done over the course of eight weeks, they had one group perform three sets of 10 reps and the other group performed seven sets of three reps. Now take a wild guess which group built more muscle. I'll give you a second. Neither. They both had similar amounts of muscle growth. Once again, speaking right back to the idea that it kinda doesn't matter when one factor is present. We're gonna come back around to that factor here in a second. Another study compared low, medium, and high reps over the course of 12 weeks for muscle growth. And once again, the researchers found no significant difference in muscle growth from group to group. Similarly, another 12 week study found that there was no difference in muscle growth between high rep and low rep groups. So repeatedly, we've seen the same thing. No real difference in muscle growth. I know what you're thinking. But what about experienced trainees? Is it different for a beginner versus an advanced trainee? And once again, Another study took a look at advanced trainees, people who had been training for a good amount of time and had them perform high and low reps. And again, neither group built more muscle than the other group. So as you've, as, <laughs> Lord Jesus, <laughs> as you've heard and seen, there seems to be no real difference between high and even medium and low amounts of reps for muscle growth. Depending on one factor, and that one factor is training to near failure. 
not total failure. Total failure will fry your nervous system and you won't see much additional muscle growth if you go to total failure. So leaving one or two reps in the tank, whether you did 12 reps or five reps, no difference in muscle growth. Now there is some consideration depending on the muscle. I'm always talking about fast versus low twitch and using that to dictate your reps, sets, overall volume and frequency for the muscle. So take that into consideration when deciding how many reps to do, but there is no better amount of reps for you to do. The whole hypertrophy range versus strength range is not really true. Not exactly true, I should say. Now I know what else you're thinking. What about strength gain? Now here is the key difference in reps and doing high amounts of reps versus low amounts of reps. In all the studies I just cited, the low rep groups gain significantly more strength. Now is that beneficial for muscle growth? I would say yes because of progressive overload. If you're not getting stronger, you're not really progressing. And while strength and muscle growth are not a cause and effect relationship, they don't have a cause and effect relationship with one another, there is a very strong correlation. Typically you can rely on your strength numbers improving after a certain point, roughly four to eight weeks, I believe. I'm gonna look this up. I don't remember this off the top of my head. After that roughly four to eight weeks, nervous system adaptation has happened and as that nervous system adaptation happens you will see a strength gain now after that point you can reasonably rely on any strength gains to signify that you are building some muscle people who are lifting constantly in the lighter rep range will typically not see nearly as much strength gain as people lifting in the lower rep range so long term the lower rep range people will build more strength will progressively overload a little bit better than the light rep groups or light weight groups. Remember the key to progress is progressive overload. So you should always be looking to try to get one extra rep, two extra reps, even if it's just over the course of three sets, you got one extra rep than you did over the course of that same three sets the previous week or the previous day you did this exercise. Progressive overload is the key. So make sure you're always progressing. That's the key, progressive overload, training to near failure, and when you make sure those two things are happening, the heavy versus light weights aren't really gonna affect your muscle growth. That's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that helps. All right, folks, and that is a wrap on our discussion on heavy versus light weights. I really hope that helps. Please let me know any additional questions that you may have. I'm here to help. I'm Coach Ty with MuscleWiki. Deuces.